Hello everyone, this is Human Hard Drive, and today on our Arduino tutorials, we're going to be going over the serial communication for the Arduino. Now, serial communication is a means of communicating between the computer and the Arduino via the USB cable, or, if you were to look on the Arduino, pins 0 and 1 say RX and TX. Now these are pins in UART transmission, that's Universal Asynchronous Receiving Transmission. And so what it is, is it's two data lines, one going to the Arduino, that's RX, RX for receiving, and one TX for transmitting. So if you are communicating with the computer, these pins will still go high and low depending on what you're setting, sending. But it'll come out the US it'll also come out the USB port. You can use this to communicate with other components that use serial communication, so GPS modules, uh, serial LCDs, that sort of thing. But today what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with just communicating with the computer to send commands to turn this LED on and off. So with that, let's get started. Alright, so let's get down to the code. So what we're gonna do is just Get started with the basic two functions you need for every Arduino program. So that's your void setup and your void loop. Uh, we're going to set pin 13 as an output so that we can control it with the serial commands. We're going to start by writing that low. There we go. Spell. Now, <clears throat> because we're using an Arduino Uno for these tutorials, the Arduino Uno actually only has one serial port. So in order to access that, you type serial, and to set it up, you can type begin 9600. Now, what serial.begin does is it sets up the Arduino's serial connection. 9600, I'm just plugging in my Arduino, is the baud rate. It's the communication rate for the Arduino. It, that's in bits per second. And 9600 is 9600 bits per second. You, you probably worked that out. Uh, I think the Arduino actually has a max communication rate of near 1 megabit per second. But 9600 is generally what you start out with. It's not too slow and it's not too fast. So for communicating between the computer and the Arduino with serial, you're going to want to use the serial monitor. It's this really nice utility built into the Arduino ID, and you just get it by clicking on that, or it's found under tools, serial monitor. So it's got two, it's got a text area where you can type in commands you want to send to the Arduino, and it's got a text area where you can read back anything the Arduino is sending you. Uh, and down here, auto scroll, so if you have an Arduino program which is sending you a lot and a lot of data, Auto scroll just keeps moving the scroll bar down so you're only seeing the freshest data. Line ending is if I were to type something in, say hello, hello world. Line ending puts a character at the end that you can use to parse input data. So new line will put a new line character, carriage return will put a carriage return character, and both will put both new line and carriage return. So you can use that to parse out commands or to say stop reading at this point. And you can select the baud rate. So we're, since we're using 9600, you can click that. The highest this goes up to is a 115,200 baud, which is really as fast as you need to go. So 9600 is the baud rate we're using. Okay, so in order to do this, we've got to check when we've got a serial command coming over the serial the serial lines. So if serial dot available is greater than zero. Okay. Serial dot available returns the number of bytes that are in the serial buffer. So as more data comes in, it stores it in a buffer that you can read out of. So character character is one byte of data, so that's one little piece out of the buffer. We'll call that letter equals serial dot read. And what read does is it pulls off the first byte in the serial buffer. And then it pushes all the data up, all the other data up. So it reads the first it reads the first byte, 
Now we'll say if letter double equals for comparison equals one digital write 13 high else if letter double equals off or zero digital write 13 low and that's really it letter is a character so that's one byte of data and it when you're trying to identify characters, it's single quote for this, not double quote. Double quote is used for strings, single quote is used for characters. And these are two I picked. These are one and zero that's on and off that's easy to remember, one on, zero off, that's your basic binary states. I could have made this anything. I could have made that eight and this L. It doesn't matter. As long as it's one character, you're fine. So zero, one. I just go ahead and hit upload. Let this thing upload to the board. Uploading. Open up the serial monitor and see what this does. So I put in one and let's look at the board. Okay, so if I put I put in one and I hit enter. Better try that again. Hit enter. It turns the LED on. I'm gonna turn off the light so you can see. There we go. And if I hit zero and push enter, it turns it off. One on, zero off. Now if you note, when I'm sending a character, turn the lights back on so you can see this a little better. There are two LEDs right here. These are the RX and TX LEDs. And these represent data coming over the serial port. So you these light up when you're trying to download a program because it's coming over the serial port to the Arduino and it also lights up when I'm sending data so this is the TX one, this is the RX one so if I send one again don't know if you could see that, let me try that again There, if I send anything the RX light lights up because it's receiving a character alright, so that's data transmission to the Arduino. Let's let the Arduino talk back. Now in order to get the Arduino to talk back, instead of saying serial.read, you're going to say serial.print. And actually there are two commands you can use to get the Arduino to talk back. There's serial.print and there's serial.write. Well, we're just going to concern ourselves with serial.print at the moment and I'll explain what serial.write does a little later. So. After it turns on the LED, we can say serial.println, the LED is on. And when we turn it off, serial.println, the LED is off. Now, again, this is a string of data, so it's within double quotes, not single quotes. Double quote, not single quote. Now, serial.print lets you print the string of data. The LN part prints a new line character at the end. So every time you say serial.println, it'll print a line. And then the next time you call serial.print or serial.println, it'll print a new line on the next line. If you were to say just serial.print, it would print this, it would print LED is on and then right next to it would print the LED is off and then next to that the LED is on instead of on separate lines. So to keep it neat, I like to print it on separate lines. Now, serial.print is different than serial.write in that serial.write transmits the ASCII character for a specific thing. So, if I were to put in a variable to this, if I were to put in, because I can, if I were to put in letter, it would actually print out the character well that's not a bad, ex that's a bad example. Why, why did I say that? If I created outside of this an integer x equals 75 yeah, 75. And then I put x in here. Serial.print doesn't matter serial.print or serial.print line, it would print 75. If I were to say serial.write it would actually print the ASCII character for 75 and I think that's 
probably capital something. I actually don't know what that is off the top of my head. Sorry. So, print prints the number, write writes the value. And that's an important thing to differentiate. So if you're using like a serial uh, serial controlled LCD, oftentimes it'll be serial.print what you want to display and serial.write if you want to write a command. So important thing to differentiate. Okay, so let's just upload this to the board. And let's see if we can get the Arduino to talk back. All right, so look at the serial monitor. So if I print, so if I say one, it tells me the LED is on. If I put zero, the LED is off. And if you look at your board, it's still being controlled in time. So, but you note, it, as long as I hit one, it's going to keep saying the LED is on, even though it's already on. And if I put zero, the LED is off. So by doing this, you can actually Serial is a really great tool when it comes to debugging code. So if you need to know where something is, Serial is a great way to do that. If you need specific output, again, it's a real. If you need to keep track of variables, timers, fl um, states of pins, really useful. So I can add on to this and say if digital read thirteen is high. So if it's on. I can say serial dot print ln the LED is really on else the LED is really off so I could I can check the state so if I'm typing something in and it's saying the LED is on but the e read isn't coming back as it's on that could be a problem with the board it could be a problem with my code so if I put on right, so it's reading the state it turns it on it's telling me that it's actually on And if I put zero so it's reading the state and giving it back so again it's really good when it comes to debugging code all right show you one more thing when it comes to debugging code so keeping track of a variable so let's say I create X again and I make it zero if X is greater than 10 X equals zero else X equal uh, X plus plus serial dot print ln X and I'll put a delay in there. So all I'm doing is I'm incrementing a value of x and when it gets to a value greater than 10 I reset it to 0. And I can use serial to keep track of it. So if I upload it, so it's a good way to make sure your coding makes sense and is actually doing what you want it to do. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I can keep track of it. So that's serial.println. To show you what write would do, and you're actually not going to see anything because ASCII characters from zero to I think it's in the 30s don't actually show up as a value. But let's see what it prints. Yeah, you can't even see it. So if I were to, if I were to make this an actual care, if I were to bring this into the character set, you know, I'm gonna make this 48. ASCII character 48 is number zero, and ASCII character 57 is character nine. So this will actually print zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then reset. Although I should have tweaked that. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, write doesn't write a new line, it just keeps on printing across, and it's printing not the number, but the ASCII character that number represents. So, that's the difference between print and write.
Okay, one more thing. The serial data lines are really good when it comes to transferring bytes of information, one byte of information at a time. They're not so good at handling bigger bytes of data. So if I wanted to create a string, so if I wanted a complex message, just like say turn LED on, if I wanted to type that in, it would be, it's a little trickier, but I've got a trick that makes it work. So start by creating a string called message. So if serial dot available is greater than zero, so if there's still bytes to be read, while serial dot available is greater than zero. So while there are still bytes to be read, it's going to go through this loop. A message plus equal, so I'm adding a character to the string, serial dot read. So what I'm doing is I'm casting what serial dot read returns. Casting means I'm changing it to another variable type. I'm changing it to a car, a character, which can be added to message so that it can be put in and so it all makes sense. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a delay. And then at the end of this, I'm going to say serial.println message. Now the reason I put in the delay is because it's printing things out faster than I can send it. Because it has to send it one byte at a time. That's what serial means. So if I were to, if you were to look at the serial code for this, and I were to type in hello, so it's printing back what I sent, and you can see that delay working. And that delay is actually really important. So if I were to get rid of that altogether and run this again, you'd see the problem we'd run into. So if I type in hello, it prints out every character because it's actually it's taking too long to read in. So that's why I put in that delay. But you do get to test entire strings. So usually I start from a value of like 250 and then just work down until it's stable and I don't lose characters all that often. So you've got to test that. So that is it when it comes to serial data communication with the Arduino. Uh, like I said, it is a really great debugging tool, and it is a really great control tool. So if you've got an Arduino hooked up to your computer that's running something else and you want to send it commands, serial is a great way to do that. Or using the two pins on the Arduino, you can use it to communicate with any myriad of devices that accept serial input. So serial LCDs, GPSs, many kinds of... ICs that use serial input can now be controlled with this. So, that's been Human Hard Drive. Thanks for watching.